Welcome back to the show. Today, you got just me, uh, no guests today. Uh, but first off, I want to uh, thank everyone for listening. Um, we've been doing this show for just over a year now, and uh, it's crazy the amount of things that I've learned from people, um, which is what I want to talk about today. But um, also appreciate the support, everyone watching, listening. Certainly appreciate it. Um, all the guests that have come on, appreciate you coming on, sharing you know your wisdom and everything. Um, so again, thank you everyone for listening, everyone for coming on. Uh, if you're interested in coming on, please reach out. Uh, you can DM me on Facebook, Instagram, um, pretty easy to find. So, uh, with that, let's, uh, I want to talk about kind of what I've learned. Um, I wouldn't say learn, but what I've definitely gathered from what, uh, what makes people, um, that I've had on the show successful. And I think just in general, right. Um, and, and obviously I'm going to talk mostly about business here, but this can be incorporated in any parts of your life. Um, so let's get into it. Um, I've found five traits and I have written this down. I've prepared for this show. So I've written this stuff down. Um, I've found basically five traits that I boiled it down to, um, that have made, uh, specifically the guests that have come on the show successful. Um, but again, I think it, it's, it relates to most successful people in, in all walks of life. So first off are the three D's, drive, discipline, and dedication. Uh, I think everyone's got, uh, that have come on, have some sort of uh, high drive. And that may be kind of like a burst, right? They may have a high drive for a few months or a couple of years, or a high drive that just keeps them going consistently, right? But there's a high drive there. There's a motor to um, within them that want they want to be successful. Um, next is discipline. Um, and all these are, are so important. Um, and again, this is number one, but there's three categories in number one. Um, but discipline is not everyone's got it. Um, but I do think when it comes to the people that have been on the show and in their aspect that they've been successful at, whatever it's been, um, business, real estate investing, whatever it's been, they are disciplined in accomplishing their goal within that. Um, within that realm. Um, and that can be, and, and I'll, I'll use it, um, I guess, my journey as an example, um, especially when I was looking, when I was dead set on leaving my job in, uh, what was it, 18, um, I kind of found that self, 18, 19, kind of found that self-storage was going to be that vehicle. Um, I, I already had plans of it being real estate investing, but um, I kind of narrowed it down to self-storage. 18, 19 is when I really honed in and I was disciplined. I mean, I was, I probably six nights a week, I was spending an hour and a half to two hours minimum um, looking up storage facilities, looking up markets, sending out mailers, um, reaching out to owners. I, it was just consistent action. So at that time, not that I don't now, but that I remember specifically at the start of kind of that journey to find, to, um, I guess, become financially free. I was already real estate investing for about five years at that point. Um, but once I really honed into what I was going to do, um, you know, the drive was there, the dedication was there, or the discipline was there. And the third thing under here, the three D's is dedication. I was dedicated to it. Uh, everyone that we've had on this, on the show is dedicated to their craft and, uh, um, and all those, you know, the three D's drive, discipline, dedication, kind of go hand in hand. Um, I think people that have come on are always looking for some type of improvement in that area too, in all those areas. Um, as far as discipline and, and dedication, they're not wasting time, right? Um, they're not sitting and, and watching, you know, TV every evening for two or three hours. Um, you know, they're, they're probably spending time with family and then they're probably you know, especially if they're working nine to five, they're probably um, grinding after after family time during the week, uh, working weekends. So there's really no there's really no off, especially, you know, we're talking entrepreneurs here. There's really no off um, as entrepreneurs. Our brains are always going um, sometimes uh, probably a little scattered, too, but our brains are always going. Um, and then uh, they're always moving closer to their goal which is again, drive, discipline, dedication. It's, it's all, they're all moving towards their goal. Um, there's no, okay, 
I'm going to go, I, I found, we'll take my example. I found self storage. I'm going to send out whatever 50 mailers this week. And then I take two weeks off and then two weeks later I start up again. It's not how that works, right? You got to keep the momentum going. You got to keep going. Um, and that's the drive discipline dedication, right? That's all the three D's there. Um, you can't take time off. You can't take, well, I'm going to go whatever on a month long vacation and do nothing. You lose all sorts of, uh, momentum. You lose, lose all sorts of motivation and then it's harder to start back up, right? It's easier to keep that momentum going um, into the next thing. So, I, I like, again, I'm going to use my example here of searching for storage facilities. When I started, I had momentum in the fact that I was very efficient with my time. I would, um, one evening, I would look up a market. Next evening, I would find um, all the facilities in that market, the owner, the mailing address, all that stuff. And then the third day, I'd send out mailers to all those people and then I'd start back over, but I was very efficient and I had momentum and I just kept going and going and going. Um, and you know, it's kind of what it takes. Um, and they don't stop. I guess last part of uh, the three D's, they don't stop. There's, there's no stopping. Um, I was just listening to, uh, Dan Martell and, uh, and Brandon Turner actually, um, an interview that we had, a uh, group that, that I'm in. And um, Brandon was talking about how Josh Dorkin, the founder of Bigger Pockets, um, th- he, I think for eight or 10 years, there was like no movement with Bigger Pockets. He made no money, but he just kept going. It was, he just was probably fixated on making this thing work um, or at least seeing it to the end. And to, at that point, there was no end, right? He just kept going and going and going. And probably in a, um, in a good way was too dumb to realize, Oh, this isn't after five years, you know, this isn't working. He just kept going. And I think that's, I think that if anything, that may be um, one of the most important things here. Most of us are just either too, I don't want to say dumb, but too blind, um, too, you know, stubborn, whatever you may call it to stop. And we just keep going. Um, but it, it, you know, obviously in the right space, it can turn to a great, um, a great positive for you. Uh, number two trait. The second trait is at some point, something triggered a change in their lives to where they want to do something different. Um, and I really like digging into that and in people's stories. Um, I mean, I, I can think of so many stories that, uh, over the past year of people, you know, whether it was a, um, uh, a family member that got in trouble, someone losing their job, um, whatever it may be, um, it was kind of like a, a seismic change in their life where they're like, you know what? I deserve more. I want more. I want something different. And I want control of my outcomes. I want to be in control of what I'm doing. And therefore, you're in control of your outcomes. Um, I think that's probably, you know, some people may call it uh, control freaks. Um which I, in some circumstances, I don't think is a bad thing, but I think most entrepreneurs are probably, they like control. Um, and, you know, obviously it can be, it can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing, but it can definitely be a good thing. Um, but yeah, at some point something triggered in their life where they're like, I've got to, I can't keep going this way. I got to go to the other way. This is the fork in the road. I've got to change something. Um, and a lot of times a pain, um, so for myself was um, after basically a decade, uh, it was sooner than that, but basically a decade of being in my nine to five, it was like, I have had enough. I've got to make a change here, um, a drastic change. Cause I was making small changes, um, but I had to make a drastic change and change. And I had that pain of that job that I wanted to leave so bad. Um, so yeah, something had to trigger a change as number two. Number three is um, wanting to, have some type of personal growth at some point. Um, You know, whether that's books, podcasts, uh, masterminds, groups, those things just uh, like if you can really, and this kind of goes back to being um, driven, disciplined, and and dedicated. If you can really dive into those things and have huge leaps and bounds in your personal growth and enjoy it, like things are just going to start falling into place. Um, you know, I'd love to bring up a story from a, a guest that was on the show, but it's 
probably easier for me because I know my own story a lot better than other stories. Um, but I used to, uh, for my nine to five, I used to have to drive around at night. I think it was about three times a month for about two hours at each time. So about six hours of drive time at night. Um, it was quiet. So I would just pop it, pop on podcasts, um, audio books, um, obviously bigger pockets at the time. That was from 20, probably 12 to till I left 2019, um, 2020, um, where I would just devour podcasts. So you're talking, um, you know, it's quiet. It's at night. I'm driving around and listen to podcasts and on bigger pockets, listen to others, other people's success stories. Um, and it's just, uh, and obviously reading books too, but personal growth at some point you need it, right? You just need to be able to think bigger. Um, you need to be able to think more outside of kind of what we're taught to. And a lot of books, podcasts, communities, groups will kind of force you into that. Um, and being around people that are doing more, right. Doing more in what you kind of want to get into. Um, and that's kind of what you're doing when you're reading a book or you're listening to podcasts. You are essentially putting yourself around other people um, with with higher mindsets. Um, it's definitely more powerful being actually in the room with those people and having connections with them. But if you got to start somewhere, uh, podcasts and books are great. And then obviously try to get around people in communities, groups, masterminds, whatever, that are thinking bigger, that can push you um, to a different level or levels. Uh, the fourth one is um, proving people wrong. And, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I do think at some point, um, and I think back to, uh, um, Strat, Stratton Brown, his story of obviously he was a good athlete, uh, but it seemed like anywhere he went, he was somewhat mediocre and always had to prove himself, um, and got, it sounds like got more out of, um, his talent just because he was trying to prove people wrong, right? He wasn't the best athlete, but he wanted to prove people wrong. And um, I think that parlays into in the business and life. Uh, and and that dude is obviously still trying to prove people wrong um, that are that have doubted him. I mean, I my guess is not a ton of people are doubting him now, but I'm sure you know over his life, and and we all have um, doubters in our lives, and maybe that's not directly related to business, but at some point in our life, um, I mean, I can speak from my situation of you know, not being a great student in school, uh, not necessarily feeling that I was book smart or school smart. Um, I did feel that I was kind of, I guess, streetwise smart in a way. Um, so there was some belief there, but I, uh, um, without a doubt, like want to prove people wrong or prove maybe the system wrong in a way, um, in order to succeed in business. So that was definitely, um, something for myself. And, and with that, and I brought up belief, but belief is a huge thing. And actually this should probably be number four is, is instead of proving people wrong, that's kind of a, um, subtopic, but belief in yourself and belief in your, in your vision and where you want to go. Um, you've got to believe in, in what you're doing and you've got to believe in yourself. Right. And that kind of also goes back to not stopping, just keep going, just keep going. Don't stop. Don't quit. Um, and that's, you know, back to Josh Dorkin's story with bigger pockets. He had a belief, he had a belief in him, probably himself and the product he was creating that it was going to be great someday. And he just kept going, but you've got to have that belief. Um, sometimes it's, you know, a lot of times, especially as entrepreneurs, it wavers. Um, but you have to have that deep down belief, like it's going to work out. Um, and you've got to continue working on, on your vision and your goals to kind of push you towards that belief. Um, and then number five is, uh, a lot of people that talk about that maybe have the other, you know, the four, um, traits that we just kind of talked about, they may have those covered, but a lot of people just don't take action. Um, they've overeducated, uh, paralysis analysis where they're just afraid to take action. They're afraid to pull the trigger. Um, I would say probably most people fall under this category that do not get going. Um, and that's why it's so it's, it's more definitely more rare to be an entrepreneur than to have a nine to five, um, to be successful in, in real estate, real estate investing. You just got to take action. Um, there's no one there that's going to force you to do it. You have to do it. You've got to take action. You've got to pull the trigger. 
a first deal. If you haven't had your first deal, um, which I do think most people probably listening um, have probably had at least their first deal. Uh, but you got to keep consistent action too. But the first deal is the most important. Whether you win or lose on it, it is the most important just to take the action to get it under your belt. And you learn so much doing just your first deal, right? And then it's so much easier to do the second one and the third one. And eventually it just becomes like a process, um, just like anything else that, that you do in your life. It just becomes a process. It becomes normalized. Uh, you're still going to run into issues, struggles, challenges, but you figure them out and you have that belief because you did the first deal, right? The first deal is really to build belief and confidence that you can do it. Um, even if it doesn't work out again, just taking it down is the, uh, is the most important thing. Um, so yeah, that's my five traits that I have, um, kind of gathered through the guests that we've had on the show. Um, again, those were, uh, the three D's drive, discipline, dedication. Um, number two was something had to trigger change at some point of pain, um, losing your W losing your job or, Maybe something happened to a family member. Uh, number three is personal growth. Um, kind of hungry for personal growth and improving themselves. Number four is uh, we're probably going to change it to belief. Um, belief slash proving others wrong, but you've got to have belief in yourself. And then number five, the most important, even if you don't have the other four, if you just take action, at some point, things will probably work out. Um, things may not go great if you don't have the other four at some point. But if you just take action, um, you can fill the other pieces in. Um, without action, the other four really don't, you know, you're, it's it's going to be tough to go anywhere. You just got to take action. It's the biggest thing. Um, so that's all I've got today. Again, appreciate everyone listening. Appreciate everyone reaching out. Uh, if you want to hop on the show, let me know. DM me on Facebook, Instagram. And as always, appreciate you guys for listening. Thanks for following, subscribing, and listening to this episode of the Do More podcast hosted by John Farling. To learn more or ask questions, go to l4investing.com.